I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots and I want to take you on a quick tour of my Zone 7A kitchen garden here in Northern Virginia. It is mid to late August. If you took my kitchen garden tour in the spring, you'll recognize some of the same plants, but a lot of plants have been switched out for our late summer and fall garden. So let me show you what's growing now. Celery is cut and come again. This early celery, it's Chinese white. I cut down when it was finished and now it's growing back. This is my Utah tall, it's a green celery. And I need, clearly need to do more harvesting and get this celery in the freezer. Back here we have peppers. These are all sweet orange bell peppers. They're doing great. And in this box, we pulled what was growing here before and have reseeded it to lettuce and carrots for the fall. In this box you can see some baby spinach plants starting to emerge for our fall spinach crop. And then down here we have Swiss chard which is still going strong. We have more peppers. I didn't do a great job tying up my peppers when they were still small enough to be well supported so they're kind of flopping. I need to do some more work in tying them and supporting them, but they're doing okay. This kale is getting pretty decimated by cabbage worms. This year, for the first time ever, I decided to experiment a little with spraying BT. I've never done that before. I've always held out against it, but it really is next to impossible to grow any kind of brassica without either covering it with some kind of row cover, insect netting, or spraying it with something. So I grow my broccoli under a tunnel. I have a system down to a science for that. But my kale, I do not like to grow under cover. So normally I pick the caterpillars by hand. It's very labor intensive, especially the more kale that you grow. So this year I decided to experiment with spraying BT. I need to do another application. I've been reasonably impressed with it. So I'm gonna continue experimenting with the whole BT spray on my kale crops. Here is more Swiss chard and another kind of kale over here which has also been somewhat eaten. Those, I think those are called harlequin beetles. Those are not a good bug either. And these are baby beets. My fall beets. I actually did not grow any beets in the spring this year so these are my first beets of the year even though it's my fall garden. Over in this box that basil started flowering before I could get to it so I'm just enjoying its addition to the garden and making it available for pollinators. This sorrel, this was my first time to grow sorrel, it's done okay. I don't know that I'll grow it again next year. It's definitely beautiful. We just harvested red onions from this spot. We have more Swiss chard, more kale that's being semi-eaten. We harvested the onions from these low boxes. More peppers here, these are jalapenos and Anaheim peppers that I like to can for diced green chilies. These are poblanos. So this box is all my um, kind of medium to hot peppers. And then all the other peppers are sweet peppers. This is one of our favorite varieties for fresh snacking. It's a Jimmy Nardello. It will turn bright red. We just harvested all the ripe peppers yesterday. That's why most of the peppers you see here are still green. These are other kinds of sweet peppers and then more Jimmy Nardellos over here. I planted these kind of as a second round of Jimmy Nardellos. So None of these over here have ripened yet, but I'm hoping to keep us in Jimmy Dardella peppers all the way up until the frost because my family loves them so much for fresh eating. They're really sweet and tasty, and that long skinny shape makes them really handy for um, just eating them raw. And then over here, let's see, we had carrots and radishes here in the spring, and now we're doing lettuce, little baby, Merlot lettuce, it's hard to see against the dark soil. It's a really pretty purple color. That's it for this side of the kitchen garden, but over here across the walkway is another section. Wait till you see the sweet potatoes. They are going to town. They clearly love it here. It's like a sea of sweet potatoes. My comfrey here is in major need of some deadheading. I need to cut the whole plant down. We like to feed it to animals or use it as mulch around trees or you can just add it to your compost. I don't like to add the seed heads to my compost because I don't want more comfrey plants developing in my compost pile. The seed heads I usually feed to animals and the leaves I try to use either in the compost or sometimes I use it as a mulch 
right in my vegetable garden or around our baby trees in the orchard. My herbs are doing well. The thyme is very happy here. This is lemon thyme. And then this was my celery overflow. I'm pretty sure that these boxes are not deep enough to support the celery. They haven't thrived and also because they're over here so far from my water source, I haven't watered them as much as I normally would. Celery needs a lot of water, but they've done okay despite some neglect. These are my three bumblebee sunrise tomato plants that came up volunteer right here where I grew them last year. And those were my summer lettuces that did okay. I wasn't terribly impressed with them. They are bolting, I need to take them out. Here are my big elderberry bushes. They have gotten so huge and we have harvested so many elderberries this year. I am cautiously optimistic about these rosemary plants. There's one right there and there's one over here hiding in the sweet potatoes that have taken over. You see it peeking out. This is another rosemary. It smells so good. And I'm hopeful that they will survive the winter. Here is the sea of sweet potatoes. Two different kinds of sweet potatoes. You can see the two different kinds of leaves right here. This is one kind, and then this is a different kind. This variety on the left is a white sweet potato, and then the majority of the sweet potatoes over here, this other type, is an orange sweet potato. Coming down the hill, the blueberries are not thriving. I don't know if it's this location, or if it's where we bought them from. Uh, these obviously are doing the best here. And then back here in this corner, we grew garlic and lettuce here in the spring. We pulled everything out and a few rogue potatoes grew there also. We pulled everything out yesterday and we need to lay down some thick wood chips there and then I plan to plant my broccoli seedlings for the fall garden in this corner. So that's my fall garden here in Northern Virginia, zone 7A. It is approaching the end of August. We have had a week of pretty heavy rains, which we badly needed, and it's supposed to be hot and humid this coming week. Not much rain expected. I hope that the temperatures will start to cool off after that and allow the fall garden to really take off those veggies that love cool weather, like the lettuces and the peas and the carrots and beets and all that good stuff. So thanks for joining me on my tour. Definitely let me know if you have any questions and happy growing. <laughs>